Hey everybody, now it's time to formalize um, how to describe binomial distributions. So a couple of things. When describing your binomial distributions, you're still going to go through and, first of all, verify that it is a binomial distribution using our bins from last time. Um, for shape, make a histogram of it. And probably one of your staplets is probably going to be the easiest way to do that quickly. Um, center, you're going to use the mean. And then for variability, standard deviation. And these two we're going to talk about over here. Calculations couldn't be simpler. Binomial distribu um, for binomial distributions, the mean is just going to be simply n times p. So the number of trials times your probability of success happening. And then um, in terms of the description, you'll need to write out like this. After many trials, the average number of, and then you're going to put the context of the success, is the mean out of the number of trials. Okay, so again, anything that we do in different colors or underlined, you're going to actually substitute in information that from the context of the problem. Okay, for standard deviation, don't worry about all that pesky adding and subtracting and squaring. It's going to turn out to be this. The standard deviation of x is going to be um, the square root of the number of trials times the probability of success times the probability of failure. And then um, for the context, the number of, and then again, success in context, typically varies by standard deviation from the mean of, mean out of, n trials. Okay? So again, pretty straightforward. Yes, you need to describe it this way. And actually, when, and I'll show you this down below, you do need to write out the formulas when you use them. So for all of you who don't show your work, if you want full credit, you're going to need to show your work. Anyway, so for the context today, um, go ahead and pause this, and then you can talk about um, if crumpling up paper is going to help you win a raffle. See you in a minute. All right, so here's the situation. You want to know, um, are you more likely to win a random drawing if you crinkle up the paper and stick it in? Curious students conducted a study to investigate. The study took 100 equal size slips of paper, 25 of them, crinkled them up, put them in a box, mixed them all up, which again, makes it random, has an uninformed person, pull out them to select a winner. The student noted if it was crinkled or not, every time they put the crinkled paper back in the paper, mixed well, asked them to do it again. Each set was repeated. That was done 10 times. So you, were, you have 10 pulls of it, so n is equal to 10. So one thing that you should go through and do here is mark a couple of these things. Student took 100 equal size slips of paper, crinkle 25 of them, because again, that's going to be your success. The process was repeated n times, so this is, or 10 times, so this is n. This is success. Probability. Um, and that type of thing, as you go through and critically read it, it can help you as you go through and do it. So the first thing you need to do, again, remember according to what we're doing up here, is establish that you do have a binomial distribution. So define your success as crinkled papers. Failure is not crinkled. Don't get fancy with this. Don't say smooth. Just say it's crinkled or it's not crinkled. Okay? Just trying to save yourself some heartache here. I independent. Each drawing does not affect the next. And we know that because it is returned to the box. So that's my independence. Okay. Um, N is 10. That's fixed. And your probability is staying the same at 25%. So yes, it's a binom binomial setting. In terms of technology, um, to make a histogram, staplet's going to be probably your best, easiest way to do it. So again, before I forget, you always want to label your graphs. Probability. So who wants to marry somebody who doesn't label their graphs, right? Um, anyway, so um, that's going to be the setup there. You can see it tails off to the right. It's not significant because, I mean, even there, it's somewhat symmetric, but you do have this tail, so we're going to say slightly skewed right. Again, don't get bogged down into, you know, just it's slightly skewed right. Looks good. Calculate and interpret the meaning of y. Or the mean of y, I'm sorry. So the mean is n times p. So notice, I label what I'm doing, give the um, formula for what I'm doing, plug in the parts of what I'm doing, and that's going to equal 2.5. All right, so the meaning of that is going to be after many sets of 10 drawings, the average number of crinkled papers drawn is 2.5. And then down here for the um, standard deviation, standard deviation, again, is equal to the formula, equal to the parts plugged in, is equal to 1.369. Okay, 
The number of crinkled papers selected out of a set of 10 typically varies by 1.369 from the mean of 2.5. Now, some of you might be saying, but wait a second, I thought he was at, this student was going out and actually getting these drawings. And the answer is yes. Okay, what we're setting up here is trying to get up of a what would normally happen if everything was fine. Okay, so like right here, if crinkled papers didn't, I mean, if crinkled papers should come up 25% of the time, period, if there's nothing of any. If crinkled papers do affect things, we're going to see something different than this, and that's something where we're going, but we're not there yet. So anyway, hope that's helpful. Throw me a like, a subscribe, a comment down below, and we will see you for the next bit of binomial distributions in a bit. Talk to you soon.